From The Onion and Onion Public Radio, I'm Leslie Price, and this is The Topical. So much goddamn news happening today that we simply don't have a moment to waste. Here are today's top stories. After widespread infections throughout the White House, many members of President Trump's inner circle are now being tested for coronavirus, including President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, who was reportedly tested positive for several dozen obscure bat diseases, none of which are actually related to COVID-19. Giuliani's physician confirmed this morning that in addition to several commonly transmittable diseases like rabies and histoplasmosis, Giuliani also tested positive for vespertilioma, a long eradicated form of bat cancer that hasn't been seen since 1903, as well as several viruses that can only be transmitted sexually between bats. Mm, Concerning, to say the least. And after his own bout with COVID-19, President Trump is home from the hospital and already back to work. In fact, just yesterday, he declared himself, quote, healthier than ever, as he addressed an excited crowd from his new iron lung on the White House balcony. Trump reportedly seemed to have no trouble speaking or breathing, as his entire respiratory system was functioning solely with the help of the mechanical respirator. All right, I'll be honest, that's all the news that happened today, but we still have to fill two ad spots, so I'm just going to scroll through my Facebook feed for a minute here and see if I can find anything else. Back in a moment. Oh, shit. What's my password again? For centuries, man has looked to the stars and wondered, are we alone in the universe? Well, today that question may have been answered. Top researchers at NASA held a press conference today to announce that they have recently discovered new evidence that life could exist outside of America. For more on this extraordinary development, I'm joined by OPR science reporter Rebecca Neal. Rebecca, I'd be lying if I said this didn't give me chills. Well, you're not alone there, Leslie. This is truly monumental. Here's Deputy NASA Administrator Thomas Daines at today's press conference announcing what could be one of the most significant scientific discoveries in the history of our species. Early days. Data collected already showed that several exocontinents maintain conditions that could support life as we know it. We now know that the atmosphere of Asia is made up mostly of nitrogen and oxygen, just like America. And Hubble telescope images show what appear to be bodies of water-like liquid located on the surface. In fact, scientists are close to determining whether humans could survive there. Wow, sending a man to another continent. I never thought I'd live to see the day. Rebecca, finding another landmass with America-like properties is like finding a needle in a haystack. How did this incredible discovery come about? Well, about five years ago, NASA decided it might be beneficial to turn their telescopes around to face the Earth just to see what it looked like. Mm -hmm. That's when these new continents were discovered almost immediately. But Dane says it wasn't until the Validity rover, which was launched to Europe in 2018, sent back its final earlier this year that they realized the significance of the discovery. Here he is again. Our transatlantic rover traveled over 4,600 miles to Calypso 46F, or Africa as it's called among scientists, to study soil samples. While the rover's instruments detected plenty of sand and dust, it also found characteristics within the soil similar to the U.S., like glass and cigarette butts. This evidence also points to the continent supporting life, as well as the numerous building-like structures dotting the landscape. Absolutely fascinating. So researchers believe that there could be life forms on these continents already with like weird features and their own language or something? It's not beyond the realm of possibility, though further exploration will be needed before anything definitive can be said on the matter. Here's Deputy Administrator Danes again explaining where NASA goes from here. In order to gain further data, NASA will be launching its first crewed mission to Europe to determine if the environment is suitable for human inhabitants or if we will just be draining the exocontinents of their natural resources. Oh, wow. This feels like it's straight out of a science fiction novel. Now, Leslie, while it is possible that there's life out there, it's unfortunately not very likely. NASA says that they've already made several attempts to make contact with the continents by sending out short radio bursts. But so far, they've only gotten back unintelligible noise like this. Hello? Salut, c'est qui? Comment mon nouveau numéro? I knew it! I knew those son of a bitches were real. Oh, God. I just thought it was a dream. Don't trust those bastards, you hear me? They'll abduct you and take you to a faraway place called Amsterdam, where they'll perform all sorts of sick and depraved experiments on your naked body. And sure, maybe you did ask them to, but you didn't know you'd have to pay for it. Uh, well... 
Yes, Leslie, I'm sure NASA is preparing for the possibility of life, both friendly and unfriendly. Oh, they're friendly, Rebecca. Too friendly. That's OPR's Rebecca Neal. We'll be back in a moment. And now we have quite a troubling story coming out of Pittsfield, Illinois. At Sherman Farm, a tiny roadside petting zoo just off the highway, there's apparently a kangaroo. We go to OPR's Alan Potts, who has the story. Thanks for joining us, Alan. Of course, Leslie. So is this true? They have a kangaroo in rural Illinois. Yeah, I know, right? It's not ideal, to say the least. Yeah. you got to assume the owner acquired it through some pretty sketchy means. I mean, there's no way that a kangaroo should just be sitting in a dirty pen on some random guy's farm. Definitely not. I spoke to Pittsfield resident Kyle Conrad, who was taking his daughter there, and he, too, was quite concerned about the marsupial. This petting zoo was clearly just slapped together by a guy who realized he already had the materials and could make some extra dough. I mean, it's literally just a bunch of animals surrounded by some two-by-fours and old chicken wire. Oh, God, and there's a fucking kangaroo. Yeah, yikes. I mean, I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure a kangaroo isn't supposed to be in the same enclosure as pigs and sheep. Yeah, this is bad. Don't you need a special license for an animal like that? Yeah... There's no way this guy actually has the proper paperwork. Wow, that is surely cause for alarm. Are the patrons at least enjoying the kangaroo? No, not really. They're all too concerned about it. Hmm. It hasn't moved since we got here. Shouldn't it at least be hopping or something? It's just lying there. There's no way it's healthy. Wow, yeah, look at it. Its face is covered in flies and it's really drooling a lot. That's not reassuring. Oh, for Christ's sake, he's having the kids feed it rabbit pellets. Kangaroos definitely aren't supposed to eat those things. Yeah, wow, the kids are just throwing pellets at him and he's not responding. They're just kind of bouncing off his face. Man, this is grim. Can I pet him, Daddy? No, sweetie, let's get out of here. Hey, y'all, welcome to my farm. I'm Buck. Y'all like my dingo? I'm sorry, we were just on our way out. Yeesh, that does not sound like a desirable arrangement for any animal. Nonetheless, a wild creature from the Australian outback. Not at all. I mean, it gets below 10 degrees in Illinois. How is it going to survive the winter? Well, that is a question for another time, my friend. We gotta go. But hey, give that dingo a fistful of rabbit pellets for me while you're out there. I am not going near that thing. That's OPR's Alan Potts. Well, folks, you're never going to guess what happened. You know that piece of shit who lived in the next town over growing up? Yeah, well, he just married that bitch from high school. Like for real. Here to talk about this juicy development is OPR gossip correspondent Marcy Hammond. Sup, haters. So, Marcy, refresh my memory. Who is this piece of shit exactly? Well, although there are many, the piece of shit we're talking about here is that one fucking dumbass who got blackout drunk and crashed his car into the Denny's after prom. Right. He also played football in a nearby town. Couldn't tell that by looking at him now, though. He really let himself go. Oh, I believe it. All those beers had to go somewhere. Now, how did that fat piece of shit end up with that bitch anyway? Well, it appears they ended up reconnecting a little while back in that shithole bar back home. You know the one where the kids would sneak into because they didn't get carded? It's right next to the alley where that gym coach was busted for trying to buy Coke. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, not as crazy as when he fucked that junior in the parking lot behind the softball fields. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was nuts. But anyway, I have it on good authority that the good-for-nothing piece of human garbage and that total bitch got drunk in the shithole bar and hooked up that night. Just listen to this voicemail I was sent by a classmate. Oh my god, you're not going to believe this. So apparently, and you didn't hear it from me, but remember that bitch from high school? Well, she totally slept with that one piece of shit. You know, the one that didn't go to our school but would still come to all the volleyball games even after he was in college. Yeah, well, they definitely boned and... Let's just say it's too late for her to get an abortion. Wow, not getting an abortion. That doesn't sound like her. <laughs> Leslie, you're terrible. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. For real, though, she actually wasn't all that bad growing up until she had her personality replaced with that BMW her parents bought her. I swear, though, by the time we graduated, she was the biggest bitch in the world. Wait, Leslie, didn't you used to have a crush on her? Me? No. I thought she was pretty, sure, and maybe at the time I had a little thing for her, but that was a long time ago. I don't want anything to do with that bitch. That piece of shit can have her. Okay, if you say so. All right, so Marcy, do you think these assholes can make it last? Well, personally, I don't think there's a chance in hell it'll last. That piece of shit can't keep his dick in his pants to save his life. Not that I feel bad for her. An annoying bitch will be shacking up with some new sugar daddy in no time like she always is. Oh. 
So if someone, say, wanted to get with that unbearable bitch, hypothetically, would it be better to swoop in now or after things head south, like as a sort of support system? Oh my god, I knew you still had a crush on that bitch! What? No, I said hypothetically! Oh, the high school group chat is gonna fucking scream when I tell them this! Hey, give me that! Remember oh. creepy Leslie, that what? weirdo no, we grew up with? No, don't say that! He's still <laughs> totally obsessed with that one <laughs> Fuck you, Marcy! We'll be right back. <laughs> don't take that! Give me... That is company property! If you received any text messages from that bitch Marcy Hammonds in the last eight minutes, I think you should know that she's drinking again and that whatever she said is nothing more than the slurred ramblings of someone with a serious alcohol problem, and she's probably going to have to go to rehab, so don't believe any of it. Anyway, here's what else you need to know today. This year's election may see more voters casting their ballots against a candidate rather than in support of one, and that sentiment is even being shared amongst this year's vice presidential hopefuls. In advance of tonight's highly contested vice presidential debate, Kamala Harris today admitted that she really only supports Biden because she hates Trump. Senator Harris did note, however, that even though Biden is, quote, far from her first choice, she'd still be willing to suck it up and vote for him, just so she doesn't have to vote for the other guy. And Elon Musk has done it again today as Tesla has introduced their new line of all-electric lamps. Hmm, what will they think of next? And finally, if you recycle regularly, you may have a big shipment headed your way soon. The EPA announced today they plan to return the nearly 600 million pounds of recycled materials that haven't been properly washed out back to households across the nation. Tough break, folks. That's why I always just dump my empty milk carton straight into the creek that feeds into my city's water supply and avoid the hassle of recycling altogether. And that's the topical for today. I'm Leslie Price. The news doesn't stop just because we're grasping at straws to fill a segment, so be sure to visit theonion.com for more on all the day's top stories. And if that's still not enough news for you, you can sign up to become a member of the Topicals Patreon. We have an all-new mail sack segment dropping this Friday available exclusively to our Patreon members, so sign up now. And if you'd like to ask a question about the news or the show, you could submit it on social media using the hashtag Leslie's Mail Sack. And don't forget to Tune into tomorrow's episode where we'll have the story of one heroic cat who single handedly saved an entire local fire department that was stuck in a tree. You won't want to miss it. We'll see you tomorrow. The news doesn't stop just because this YouTube video has. For even more on all the worst things happening in the world right now, listen and subscribe to The Topical on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, you insatiable news freaks.